Clemens is a place in Winston-Salem where everyone goes to church. Everyone identifies with the church. So he became the devil. He became a quote unquote Satanist. Even the name Pazuzu, I mean, come on, it's the name of the demon in the exorcist. What is the biggest, scariest thing? It's Satan, it's the devil, El Diablo, the fallen one, Lucifer, Pazuzu. I mean, these people believe in this stuff. Lawson trolled pop culture and kind of came up with this persona. It's a little mixture of Manson, throw in a little Anton LaVey, a little 1980s heavy metal, you know, 666 type stuff, and there you go. And then when 9-11 came, he put on the jihadi mask. It was as if he was trying to be what people are afraid of, you know, made him powerful. And it seems like there were some young women who were particularly susceptible to his persona. Pazuzu dated a lot of girls, and he apparently had sex with a lot more. I think the majority of his power came from the same place, the same reason that we were all there. That little bit of darkness that we all kind of gravitated towards. All of his women are very young, and a lot of them are, get, are going through terrible times. Amber Birch is the best example. You know, I mean, here's a girl who's just out of high school. She hooks up with Pazuzu, and a few short months later, she's helping him dispose of a body. But why? What was it about Pazuzu that these women would sacrifice their futures for him? When I first met Pazuzu, he told me that he was the gatekeeper of hell. He had this thing called fiancés. He had several women followers, Dixie, Crystal, Amber, and he called them his fiancés. That term has always stuck with me, fiancés. He had the sense of power power of fear. That's where I think Pazuzu derived most of his power from. Pazuzu would tell me all these crazy stories about, you know, hurting and maiming people. I'd look at him and just be like, okay, buddy, sure you did. You, you sure do. <laughs> the first time I met them, I drove Amber, her bubbles, and Pazuzu home. And when I saw their front door, that's when I knew something was highly wrong. I didn't want to be there. I wanted to leave immediately. Um, but they asked me to stay and watch a home video of theirs. The video was of Pazuzu and Bubbles dancing around naked. Bubbles lying on a bed in one scene, doing inappropriate things to herself. I knew the video made me nauseous. It was intense. Pazuzu in one shot had a knife and a bloody bandana on his head. Apparently, it was Josh's bandana, from what I was told by everyone that hung out with him. They had trapped him in a basement, and they'd starved him for days. And either before or after they shot him, they cut off his extremities his arms and his legs and his penis. And they buried him in pieces. Crystal was proud to tell everyone she knew that she was involved. He had spoken to me on several occasions that he had killed homeless people and done a whole bunch of other people really badly, shot a few people, stabbed a few people. There was never any proof to my knowledge of any of these things happening. You know, I just thought that he was trying to look cool. I was there hanging out and Paz told me, hey, I got a person in my basement. Okay, cool, whatever, dude. <laughs> it's not my problem. I was told if a person comes out of the basement, don't let him go. No one ever made a sound. No one ever knocked on a door. No one ever did anything. I was told that there was a person in the basement. I said, sure. If they come out of the basement, I'll make sure they don't leave. Clearly thinking that they're full of shit. Pazuzu looked at me, grabbed a very large knife. It was more or less a sword, but uh, 
He said, I've done something. He didn't say what he had done. He said, you're going to help me dig this hole or I'm going to kill you. 